Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'll show you how I made this animated loop that I posted on my Instagram a while back. I post stuff like this a lot, so if you want to see more, click the link in the description. And if you follow this and want to share your result on social media, make sure to tag me. I'd love to see your take on it. Okay, so we're here in Blender 2.83, and I originally made this in 2.82, so it should work just fine there also. This is just my uh, default startup scene. Um, the only difference from yours might be that my camera is parented to an empty over here. So when I move the, the empty and rotate it, the camera points at it. If you want to follow along exactly, make sure that you parent your camera to that empty, but it's not necessary to do that if you don't want to. Okay, first thing we're going to do is delete the default cube like we all like to do. Um, add in a plane. I'm just going to scale that up by 10. Tap into edit mode. I'm going to subdivide that by 100. And go back into object mode. And then we're going to go into the modifiers over here and add a displacement. And I'm going to add a new texture right here. I'm going to set the texture coordinates from local to object. And the object that's going to control this texture isn't created yet. So I'm just going to add in an empty and I'm just going to move that behind the camera for now. And I also want to make sure that the plane and the empty are in a separate collection from the camera and all that. So then on our modifier, we just want to click object and select that empty. And now when we go into the texture tab, change this to Voronoi. And this looks like it's displacing a little too much, and that's because we didn't apply our scale. Now it should look normal. When we move that empty, um, the texture should follow like that. So select that plane again. And I just want to turn the size up to 1 and change this from actual distance to Chevy Chev. So it should be uh, like some squares right now. And the main thing that gives us the result that we're looking for is scroll down to colors, check off the color ramp, and we're going to add a whole bunch of flags here. And it's basically going to take each of these squares and make it a bunch of rings. And right now our plane looks really low resolution, and that's because we need to add some more geometry. So I'm going to go back into our modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier. And just make sure that that is above the displacement. And I just turned that up so the viewport is at 3 and the render is at 4 right now. So I'm going to go to the texture tab again. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this from linear to constant. And I'm just going to drag this white flag over here. And this is running kind of slowly on my computer, so I'm actually going to turn the viewport down to 2. And so I changed this to constant so that when we add flags, they become one of these two colors. Whereas if you have it set to linear, the flag that you create is going to mix the two colors, and we don't want that. So make sure you're in constant for this. And I'm going to add a total of 13 flags. You don't have to add nearly as many if you don't want to, but I'm going to add 13. So here we go. And basically what I'm doing is just alternating these colors like this until we get to 13. And so if I counted correctly, this should be 13 flags. Um, and they're all unorganized, so I'm just going to click this arrow right here and do distribute stops evenly. And so notice how the, we start with a black one and we end with a black one. Yours should be that way too. Um, and we're just going to change this back to linear. And we'll see over here that it became a little smoother. This is a little hard to make sense of, so I'm actually going to go back into the modifiers, and I'm just going to turn the strength down to 0.2. So now we can see that each square is a set of rings. Okay, next, what we're going to do is animate our empty. So I'm just going to press N so we can see our transform stuff over here. Select our empty, make sure that we're on frame 0, and I'm just going to add a, a keyframe for the Z location. And I'm also going to do that on frame 250, our last frame. And then on frame 125, I'm just going to change our value to 0.5 right here and add another keyframe. Make sure you select these and press T and change the interpolation to linear. And so now this should just go up and down over the course of our animation. So when we play our animation, we can see that when the empty moves, it's deforming our plane. And if this is going a little too slowly for you, you can just select your plane and either turn off the subdivision surface modifier for the viewport, or you can just change the viewport settings to be a little smoother. OK, now that that is animating, I'm going to add another plane. And this is going to be our ground plane. And I'm just going to scale that by 10 also and apply this and apply the scale. And just to be organized, I'm going to name that ground. And now I'm going to select our deformed plane and tab into edit mode, make sure everything is selected. And I'm just going to move everything over so that our origin point is on the very edge. That's what that little dot is. Then I'm going to go back into object mode and put our plane back where it was before, effectively just moving our origin point. And then if we go to the modifiers over here, 
and hit mirror and then change this from X to Y, it should flip our plane over. So it's like mirroring right here and you can tell that it's symmetrical and it might look a little different. And that's because our ground plane isn't mirroring with it. So if we just add an array modifier to the ground plane, it should be set to two right here. Change the relative offset uh, from one on our X to one on our Y, and that should flip that over also. And then I'm going to right click this collection instance to scene. And that's going to create an instance of this entire collection. So anything we edit in here will be uh, changed in this one also. And I'm just going to drag this over and that should be moved uh, 40 meters on the Y axis. And if we look at these two, that should be mirroring also. Now that we have that set up, I want to animate our camera. And so I'm going to put a keyframe for our Y location on frame zero. And for our last frame, I just want to set this to 40 meters and insert another keyframe. Make sure both of those are selected and set to linear interpolation. And now I'm going to hit zero on our numpad to look through the camera. And I just want to make sure that we don't see any of the background in here. I just want to be looking directly at the plane. That should be good. Now, as we can see, our last frame should be the same as our first. So nothing is changing here. And because that's the case, this should result in a seamless loop. And if you look at our animation, you can see that at a certain point, uh, these frames clip into each other and squares just kind of pop into existence. And if you don't like that, um, what you can do is take your empty and just rotate it very slightly on the X axis. And that'll make it so the squares come up as ramps instead, and it just looks a little more gradual. Okay, with our animation done, we can go into the shading tab over here. And I'm just going to select our deformed plane and click new for new material. And just make sure you're in rendered view over here and also make sure that you're using EV. First thing I'm going to do is add in my own HDRI and you can add whatever HDRI you wanna use. And I'm just gonna make sure that the HDRI is set to the right one over here. For mine, I'm using this Galaxy that I made in another tutorial. You can really use whatever one you want. You don't have to use this one. But if you do want to use this one, I'll put a link to the video up above. And if you want it, but you don't wanna make it, uh, I'm selling it on Gumroad for a dollar with two other Night Sky HDRIs. One thing I would also like to do before we get into shading is add some lights so we can see a little better. So I'm going to add a point light and I'm going to parent that to our camera so that when our camera moves, our light moves with it. And with our light selected, I'm gonna go into the object data properties over here and I'm just gonna turn that up to a thousand. And I'm gonna lift that up a little. I'm actually going to change this from shader over to 3D viewport, render view, so we can look through our camera also. So I'm going to take this light and I'm gonna move it over to one side. I'm gonna duplicate that and that should still be parented to the camera. I'm gonna move that one over to the other side. And I'm just gonna set these to two different colors and they can be whatever colors you want. But for this one, I'm gonna set one to green and I'm going to set the other one to be blue. And I'm just gonna change the saturation a little to be 0.5, just so they're not as vibrant. And then I'm going to uh, shift D to du duplicate another one. I'm gonna clear the location and I'm just gonna lift that up. I'm gonna turn the saturation all the way down to make it white. And I'm just going to move this ahead a little and to one side. And if we don't like any of the reflections, we can always change this later. So now that our lighting is set up, I'm going to go back into the shader editor over here. And so with our deformed plane selected, I'm just going to change this color all the way to white. And I'm going to turn metallic all the way up. And for now, I'm going to turn the roughness down all the way. And we're going to add a Musgrave texture. And this is going to affect our roughness and also make it look like we have some scratches going on. So I'm going to press Control T on the Musgrave texture, and that should add the texture coordinate in the mapping node if you have the Node Wrangler add-on installed. I'm going to take uh, UV and plug that into the mapping instead. And I'm going to preview this node by pressing Shift Control click on it. And I'm just going to change our scale up to 300. And I'm also going to stretch that out along the Y axis by putting a 0.2 over here. I'm also going to turn the detail all the way up on that Musgrave texture and the dimension uh, down to one just to make it a little more detailed. Okay, for the roughness, I'm going to add a mix RGB and we're going to use this Musgrave texture as a mask. So we're going to plug that into the factor and plug the mix into the roughness. And then I'm going to preview our principled BSDF again. And so now these two colors will be our maximum and minimum roughness values. So I'm going to put black 
right here for our minimum. And for our maximum, I'm going to do uh, white, which is a value of one. And one thing I like to do, you might have seen this in a few of my other videos, is put a value node and a math node and plug the value into our lower value color, so the black, and then plug the value into the add and the add into the higher color. And so now these two colors will be uh, this distance apart. And when I say this distance, because these are black and white values, I'm basically just talking about the value right here. So for our minimum value, I'm going to do 0.4. And I'm just going to play with this value until I like the separation that I'm seeing. So maybe 0.2 should be good for now. And then I'm going to add in a bump node and plug that into the normal of our principled BSDF. And I'm going to plug our Musgrave texture into the height. And this is looking a little crazy, so I'm going to change the distance to 0 0.03 to make it a little su more subtle. And I'm going to add a math node. And you can leave that set to add still. And I just want to clamp that. And I'm just going to play with this add node until we get some indents that are kind of lining up with the, the changes in our roughness also. So I'm going to turn that down pretty far, maybe to like right here. And I'm also going to invert that because it looks like these are coming out right now and we want them to go in. And real quick, I'm just going to go into our render properties all the way down and I'm going to go into color management. And for look, I'm going to go from none to very high contrast. And so with our metal done, we're going to add that milky texture to the ground. So click on that and make a new texture. Change the base color to white all the way and the subsurface to white all the way. And then I'm going to just turn the subsurface all the way up and the roughness all the way down so it's shiny. And so the subs what the subsurface is doing is basically instead of light just bouncing off and creating a reflection, it goes inside and bounces around for a while. The main difference that you'll see is that it's picking up the color of the light a little more when you do this, making it look kind of milky. And so now that the shading and the lighting is all set up, I'm just going to go back into the 3D viewport over here. And I'm just going to tweak the, the lights until they're in a place that I like them. So what I did was move the lights a little closer to the plane to create some uh, more harsh shadows. So I just took that light that was in the back over here, the white one, and I moved it to the side a little and I turned the power down to 500. Next, I'm going to go back into our layout mode, look through the camera and go into render view. And you can see that in the corners, it's a little sharp. So I'm just going to click on our plane, our deformed plane, and uh, right click and shade smooth. And right now our render view is set to four for our subdivision surface modifier. So to see what that actually looks like, you can change the viewport to four also. And so this would be the resolution of our final scene. And so the last thing I did is I changed our displacement strength down to 0.1 instead, just because I think it looks a little closer when the two planes are really close together, you can kind of make out the individual rings a little better. And so now when you export it, you should get a result that's similar to mine. And that's pretty much it. If you've watched my other videos, you might have seen a few of these techniques before. You can make a lot of things with a small amount of tools, so I encourage you to play around and experiment. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and leave me a comment if you have a suggestion for another video. And don't forget to tag me on Instagram so I can see your creations. Thanks for watching. See ya.